Hey, how are you guys? Good to be back with you. Thank you. It's the Market Sniper. We're going to be talking energies. Uh, that's right. We're going to talk oil. We're also going to have a review on natural gas and what we think is going on. And basically, in this case, I'm going to say, uh, make the case that the whole narrative that inflation is over and the battle is won is far from true. In short, as they are starting to declare that their CPI measures are down on one year ago, which doesn't mean they're back to where they were uh, in any way, that you're about to potentially start to see energies begin a resumption of potential upside after a bit of a soft spot that preceded from around September last year, but going into the beginning of this year, but choppy right the way through May. Uh, and that in actual fact, oil is now my bias buy side uh, for oil related uh, and also potentially for gas coming. Remember, September, it is the beginning of the potential beginning of the run into the winter. That is, the fall is coming on the 23rd of September. Mm, 23rd of September. Lots of mutterings about the 23rd of September. Gemantria number fellows. Anyway, that's one for a reset video. But uh, 23rd of September is the beginning of fall. And fall it may well be uh, for a lot of things, but I doubt the inflation is going to be one of them. Uh, why? Well, winter in Northern Hemisphere, obviously the most populous part of the world and prices going up and then a potential cyclical time of the year run for gas. By the way, they bought a ton of coal, they being Europe, uh, last year, 450% increase. I know are coming out of South Africa and Richards Bay on coal that was imported to make up for that possible shortfall and not buy Russia and all of those things. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting as we head into the cooler days uh, of the Northern Hemisphere and how it will look. Uh, another thing I want to say to you all, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, you've really blown up the silver, unveiling the silver dream machine video. It's got about 21,000 views in barely five days um, and you've really smashed it out the park and shared it. Lots of Reddit threads. We love it. Thank you to all of those of you who did that. Uh, you help us. That is real currency for us and we are truly grateful. Anyway, let's get to the charts and take you into the take of the moment. So here we go, looking it up, and this is the WTI. I, I, yes, you can, by the way, follow our whole history with calls on the oil, which included saying the 129 was the high uh, after calling for single digits. Um, and that is in our website, themarkettyper.com, macro case studies. You can see the charts. You can see the calls before the market has moved. We're not after timers. We're not interested in that. So what's happened since this was the secondary high that failed to make a new high, and then it was steadily, steadily down. And this was the period where we said a bit of a cautionary for energies existed. And then we got that gap. That gap was a production cut. So the management of oil prices has been far more joined up by, you guessed it, a potential new entrant to the BRICS cartel. Yes, uh, Saudi Arabia. So instead of working against each other, Russia and Saudi might in fact be working more for each other as Saudi moles the possibility of joining the BRICS. You know, they're the only one that didn't bite everyone's hand off. They said, thank you. Um, yes, yes, we're definitely going to think about that as part and parcel of saying goodbye to their ex-girlfriend. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the one with the deaf, dumb and blind president who keeps sniffing children. Children. Um, that's right, that one. So as a result uh, of that, they will uh, pretend, pretend to move and think cautiously about absolutely joining the new group, uh, which of course is going to mean more cooperation uh, between Russia and Saudi Arabia on the prices. And this was an example in case that we already began to see in March, which is why, as I say, it is all part of a phony game that they're acting. They delighted and secretly campaigned for it and want to be part of it. So what is the technical breakdown? Well, you'll see that uh, uh, we've used our usual color for a little bit of a neck line over here. We've gone for the 82 and a half. It's kind of substandard, uh, substandard, um, non-standard is the word I'm looking for. It's not a typical structure. It's kind of complex. There's a lot of zigging and zagging, but that we're going for a right shoulder on. And then you get a, a very interesting well, let's just do the left shoulder while I've got the blue, because that's fairly easy. No teller price behavior, by the way, came in and bounced on the gap. This was all gap. No price took place. They just announced uh, out of the blue and the price went straight up. So in other words, no volume traded. It just was, ooh, you're cutting production. You're going to do price management. OK, well, then we won't sell off then. And that was a great defensive play during a soft period. 
So this head, let's talk about the head. Here she comes, here she comes. There we go. Very complex uh, a W head because first after the production management, it got all so bullish and then actually it went back bearish again. So a little bit of chop and uh, dip and dive and then we ended up with that eventual W4 head. Note that and that this was a lot more What's the word? If you look at this as a hammer, that was far faster rejected once it came to the downside. So you actually had body, even though this is the deeper dip on the second uh, bum cheek of the W, if you'll allow me, um, the body levels uh, tell you slightly differently. This was super high vol, so it absolutely spilled and then rebounded super strong. That is the body levels there. That is the body levels there. So I tend to look at candles on certain time frames at both a wick and a body level. Uh, and then you have a far less volatile rebound. You have this more rounded and then trended up out. So you had a spiky left cheek and a more rounded right cheek. So as part and parcel of a rounded bottom and a more concavity, you end up often getting that being <coughs> a bullish sign. Uh, and it's pretty good that it comes on the second cheek rather than the first where it's a little bit spiky and bony it's all pelvis over there there's no flesh uh we like a bit of flesh don't we anyway so uh before we get distracted into other topics what happened here what happened here he says with a glance away at the screens that essentially uh, occurred with the last few days of last week in fact we went into the live trading day with us last friday recording still available um and we spoke of the uh non-farm payrolls and its potential emphasis, uh, emphasis on markets generally and what's gone on was a little bit of a spike for silver and then dump. You saw the metals actually got pushed up and then back down and that looks like a short-term reversal that's going on there on the metal side but we're here for the oil. No such problem for the, uh, the, um, the, the oils. What we've seen is WTI is consistent onwards. I'm on a three-day so it's a little bit of a non-standard uh, non time frame but I wanted to have a, a sufficient space to explore this pattern. In fact, I might drop to a daily just uh, just now and we can go a little bit deeper in there. That was you entering into this. But this generally is reversal structure. Not ideally textbook simple reversal structure but identifiable by us as such and uh, that is a triggering event after supporting on that gap band or that seam of strength that came in around about 75 to 79 uh, dollars so you just dipped in there you never uh, went below this level again so it served as a bit of support and in actual fact you've been pushed up so the question is where does it take you where does it take you how far do you go um, and this could point to hundred dollars falling again and in fact we've got a target in and around the 107s now this could give you a 107 don't forget 129 up top here but at a candles bodies level probably 120s so 107 could in fact be a nice secondary high and then a little bit of an easing again to make up a much bigger structure of continuation for new highs of all in oil. So we've always been somewhat of an inflationist and expecting um, energies continuing to be a tax on all of the citizenry. Why not get into your 15 minute uh, cities and your little battery powered push bike and chug along there um, while those windmills burn in fire and tumble over and good downs are occurring all around you yep that's the delights that our statist overlords are bringing down on us but let's not get carried away let's drop that time frame and have a little look on a lower time frame and see how it's gone so it's actually been quite a good little break there was that gap as you can see um, a little bit of analysis going on there. This is, as I say, a sustained hold down here, but you didn't run any lower. That was the wick that went a little bit harder. So the 82.5, you just tested and ran and pulled back, but you didn't run below the gap zone. And as a result, this is actually quite uh, firm. I wouldn't chase. Remember, friends, just because something looks interesting and may have a target at some point in the future doesn't mean it's going to be a straight line distance to that target. There'll be ups, there'll be downs, uh, there'll be higher highs, there'll be higher lows, there'll be dip downs, there'll be all sorts of things on that go. There'll be potentially all sorts of things on the go. But uh, after two big candles like that on the daily, so that would have been uh, today so far, I'm assuming we are the 4th of September. Yes, and that would have been last week, uh, non-farm payrolls. So actually with non-farm payrolls, and the irony of this is 
you, you don't know what to believe anymore. Non-farm payrolls, uh, the number uh, was kind of a meat number, mildly higher. Um, they were expected 169 and they got kind of 180 something. But actually earnings, aggregate earnings um, were down and I think unemployment was a little bit higher uh, and actually it was a nasty old mixed bag and, and the number itself has become, you know, it's a statistical anomaly. It's just whether you know, you're above fake number or below fake number and how much below, above and below with the birth death model and everything that goes. That, I don't take the number, the actual number, particularly seriously. Uh, and the, the earnings, uh, the fact that people aren't earning as much as people are expecting them to earn in terms of growth in an inflationary environment as well, let's just remind you, um, where you have to grow a certain amount just to keep intact with what uh, your overlords are generating in inflation with all their lovely little schemes and money laundering rackets that they are um, doing. Uh, so as a result, you, you had the metals actually get washed up and then back down. But what you had on um, energies in an environment that is actually indicating that the market is weak, the US market is weak, you would expect oils to have fallen on that, on the undershoot of both earnings, because less money, less expenditure on travel, holidays, etc. Uh, and you would have expected on unemployment, um, less people working, also less expenditure on jobs, travel, going to work, etc, etc. Um, and you would have expected that to be a down. So that is actually quite a bullish event for the market to have gone contrary. So bad news is good news again, uh, for the oil price certainly. So overall, oil is a big uh, component. Energies, if we go the larger energies, we'll also have a look at uh, uranium uh, for a small bit and a couple of, uh, we'll look at natural gas as well, just to highlight some of these things. Um, energies as a whole going up is going to add to inflation. So all those top callers on inflation and saying, well, you know, we called it right, inflation has turned, this has turned. Uh, no, 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 no. They will call the top on interest rates too soon. They'll call the top on inflation too soon. Um, you can get uh, periodic lulls, you can even get pullbacks, but when you've got this amount of debt, the debt value has to go down. They need to do real, in real terms, negative inflation to try and deflate away that debt, which means the actual interest rates will be lower than the true inflation rates. To destroy uh, that. So it's a very stagflationary and it's a hyper stagflationary because it's at an extreme level that actually sh shames the 70s uh, and all that went back there. So let's have a look at the natural gas, uh, just pivot across. So we highlighted over here that this was an interesting move and immediately it pulled back. So it was kind of sensitive. Now initially we had actually chosen um, the first draw in and around our target from a head and shoulder as a neckline. Uh, and it was kind of close to the three. And I had a relook and I did a redraw on this uh, pattern structure. And this is the key thing. You must always be reevaluating, especially with the benefit of hindsight. As you get new data, go back and see how much stains. Don't be dogged and stick to what you want. People always get really irritated. This is one of the most favorite things. But you said last year, last month, last week, yesterday, that's a buy and now you say it's a sell. Actually, you do need to uh, be able to process new information and change your view all the time. Uh, and initially that was, that neckline, uh, my apologies, that target from that head and shoulders was such a seminal level, we took the 2.9. Uh, and this had run that, in fact, we thought, okay, let's go with that as our neckline visit and this was a neckline break on that target level. In actual fact now, I have uh, amended that slightly and I'm going for the massive round number. It was very close. We went 2.9, but three is the, the roundest of them all. And because of the nature of how this dipped a little bit more back than you might have expected if that, if that had been the breakout and that was the shoulder. If that had been the shoulder and that was the breakout, that was quite a strong dip back. So we say, okay, new information, reassess and redraw. And that's a slight change. It's, it looks like a minor change. You're essentially moving from 2.9, that was a purple line just below, uh, a, a blue line, sorry, just below that purple line. Uh, and now we say no, three. So this actually was the armpit, it's not that. Uh, 
uh, and you haven't had the break yet, that means it's still to come. So the draw remains uh, broadly valid as a potential reversal, but there hasn't been a triggering event yet according to us. So we call it an armpit. That's your first, that's the end of your left shoulder, the very last moment that you start this big long head. And we've gone for that as an armpit too instead of that, which no longer is. Uh, and this therefore is your new right shoulder working its way. So we will see. It's not a violent move up. It was reasonably strong there. But this has been a lengthy, churny bottom for uh, natural gas. It's had to obviously uh, go through the whole summer period. There's not always the highest demand in summer. But that was a little bit of a falling wedge there that got you a little bit of zip for the neckline visit that gave us our armpit two in Greek handwriting. There we go. Uh, and that is your dip. And it's it's an okay dip. It's around about just sub 2.5. You're making your way back up. So if this turns out to be correct, and by the way, this is a scenario. I'm saying if there's nothing uh, to stop this, actually, it could sell off and run new lows, by the way. If we had a huge demand destroying event, it can happen. This is just one of many scenarios. We're throwing this one uh, against the wall right now because we're seeing all oil going up. We're seeing uranium uh, make uh, big moves now. So I'm back to my primary bias for energies after a little bit of a concern on uh, uranium about a year ago to six months ago. There was some signs uh, of a little bit of softening in the energy complex as a whole. Um, and so this could be a triggering event. And again, that would give you a higher target of potential uh, gain uh, around 4.4s on the gas as a move up. That too, if it overshot and ran up, maybe it visited the neckline. This one can be a little bit bipolar. You know, it can swing from one extreme to the other. So p potential for, remember, on a head and shoulder, head and shoulder is often a cyclical reversal. You can see here that gave you the uh, 2.9, but in actual fact, your absolute lows were down at just about 2. You almost traded 1.9s, all the 9s. So it had a fair amount of overshoot. We are in log scale, by the way. So if that's confusing you, you can have a look at it in regular scale. But it, you, as you can see, that looks a tiny bit flat. Uh, so we prefer to see it, the big moves. Um, something else, by the way, you can bear in mind, um, one of the things you can do, and this is the most valuable thing uh, for targeting that comes out of Fibonacci's, I think. It's totally underutilized. Everybody's got Fibonacci extensions and three and 1.618 on your, you know, your third up leg after your A, B and then your B, C and now your C, D is going to be 61.8 more than your primary. Everybody loves and knows and is familiar with that, but so few people uh, do targeting on the key gap being in the midpoint. Now, the way it goes, I would say you might have taken from there or you might have actually taken from there. Uh, let's just see how, if you'd gone all the way from the top all the way to the bottom, it's a bit high. Uh, typically, you go from the point where you begin to capitulate to the next point uh, of bottom. So where, where the price really, really fell hard. I would say that's your right shoulder, your top of your right shoulder. You did have a bounce and you might have been tempted to put it there. So this isn't from extreme highs to extreme lows. The rule is, where is the area of primary capitulation? I would take from the top of the right shoulder, which is where I've placed it, to the bottom before you get a major move. So most of this move is largely down with very little in terms of rally. You're getting the capitulation of the move. You can see this has essentially this. It's pretty straight down. There's a bit of a zig and a zag there, and there's a small zig and zag there, but it's largely capitulative. Uh, and when you are in that and you're over here, you're over here for that. If you put the 50% often on the biggest gap, you often get an idea for where the best target might be. Let's just see over here. I might prefer that actually because that was quite a big rally and it was a bit violent so we'll rub out the super top there and we'll go from there this is minor league you've got to remember we're on log scale so it's making this look a little bit more significant if you're looking at it just without the log you uh, you can see the scale of moves are relatively small here in the lower so it magnifies so that's the point of capitulation all the way there, minor rally into a low. 
So what does this? Uh, what is this law? Uh, it comes from uh, Constance Brown's book on Fibonacci. She, she says it didn't work perfectly on this one, by the way. I'm just mentioning it because it's 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 close. It's not bad. Um, is that if you put while you're falling, if you are in a falling market or an exponential spiking market, and you get a gap, put the 50% in the middle of the gap. So what you do. So assuming you were here, you've just started, that's just had this, you've just had the gap, you're somewhere here, and you want to know how much further down will it go, put the 50% in the middle of the gap and it'll give you a target. Now in this case it overshot, um, so I'm teaching you a rule that in this isn't even a perfect example, but I have got absolutely umpteens of them where it is an incredibly good target take for that. So you know at 4.2 you wouldn't have been thinking that you would see uh, 1.6 you wouldn't have been thinking that you'd even see twos uh, as a rule but if you do that from the point of capitulation all the way down and you put the 50% in the middle of the gap it's usually the fastest point of fall that you get a gap and it's often at the 50% level that's right it's not you don't base your life on this don't go to the casino and uh, put gazillion to our long life savings, but it is a guide, uh, a guide rule that has an uncanny um, knack of showing up and being very damn accurate. And at 4.2, you wouldn't even have thought sub 2 uh, at all was on the cards, never mind sub 3 even. Uh, but in actual fact, this would have given you a target somewhere down there. So again, remember you would be in regular scale for that. So it's not too bad, it's only about 0.4 out uh, in this particular instance. Uh, so watch out for that and see and play with it in future examples. Uh, so that could be the reversal. It could be, it could be, it could take a while. There's nothing too super violent about it just yet. It's kind of lower volatility. So we're going to put our alerts in there. Come and tell me when you start getting back up there and tell me if you're heading in the opposite direction so that we can, you know, throw that particular possibility out if you're running lower. So that's the value of alerts. Don't forget to put them on your charts, guys. Uh, good. So that's natural gas. So there's been a good period. We had uh, uranium do rather rather well. Where are we going? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not the uranium I'm wanting. Shruff, Shruff, uh, good old Sprots has made a localized upside target for us. We liked uh, the proportionality of this structure particularly. And that is now back on the road and broke. It did pull back quite strong into it, but it is looking really, really good. Uh, and I think it's going to get through to 1552 uh, in terms of it. That's Sprott's uh, Uranium Trust. There are one or two others. We had looked at uh, UEC at one point as being weak. So this was during the week period. And can I highlight this one virtually made uh, its target before it turned. So it's often common that things that don't make their bearish targets and start to reverse and then invalidate are subsequently going to become bullish. So near the end of a move, you have a pattern that fails. So what happened here? We looked at this fella and said, you don't look right to us. This is when we were bearish uranium and you had this uh, form essentially and we said you're going to come and make 226 well it made 238 no it was lower than 238 it made about 2 230 i would imagine at its absolute low but it didn't run target so it's still a failed pattern because it subsequently ran through our um, invalidation but you should not after that amount of time and the the rally point you should not have just stood the whole time on that stop and watched all of that wash away. Uh, some people do, um, but you can see you've got a type 3, uh, which is a pop out the top on a rising wedge with a likelihood of going higher. So you could see why we were negative at the time and how that negativity eventually ran its course and reversed on a number of uraniums. So uh, uranium actually looking generally pretty, pretty good now. Um, I was looking and there's a popular uranium ticker that guys really enjoy. Uh, we, would, we spoke a lot of Uroy, by the way. 
So let's just bring that one up. That was a uranium play. Um, let's go to the three day. So again, we suggested that this could uh, break to the downside. It did. That was its break. That was its neckline and that was also its break. Traded down, 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 down and is now coming steadily up. It's going to take a violent, let's go back to log scale again because that's again, it's, it's, it causes a little bit of, um, when you're looking over big time frames, over items that are moved, causes quite a lot of compression. Um, so back to log scale, you can see that this guy is now walking its way out and that would be the level of invalidation at three. But I wouldn't still be holding this. Why? Why do we eventually taper and walk away from trades? The deeper you get in, the more time that is utilized, the best moments are usually in the beginning. So typically, it's a bit like the jetpack getting away from gravity. You really have to hit the blasters and really put the fuel on and you're, you're blasting away. As you start to run out of fuel, time is elapsing and you're getting away from Earth. Uh, you start to run out of fuel. Um, you've converted a lot of your potential energy into kinetic energy to, fought, to fight and take you in that direction. It starts to dissipate until eventually you've emptied the tank and then you're gliding back down to earth. And if you don't have uh, gliding wings, you're actually plummeting back down to earth. So uh, later on, you should always be walking away from key trade ideas. So the deeper you get into them, they should be delivering what you want with time and it should, you should picture the little sand hourglass spinners. Uh, we actually have inside our methodology time-based stops and it's amazing how once the time is up that is geometrically generated by the pattern and you'll learn that by the way when you click the link below and book a call to a friendly chatty face that's a trader just like you not a salesman uh, there's no high pressure anything you can talk about what you're looking to do um, why we use uh, time stops and time stops are you have a loss stop you have a take profit, but you need that vertical that says you can't wait for kingdom immemorial between two levels. What if it stayed between those levels for decades? Think of the opportunity cost that goes with that. Think of the carry cost of the position. Some of these positions could be carried with leverage. There might be CFDs. There could be everything. There is a consequence for things not happening that are supposed to happening that sees you taper an idea. Do this by then or else. So the code must cover for both your loss stop if you're long, your take profit for the good times, only certain rules for overperformance. And even when we have overperformance, what the criteria for the exits are there. So it doesn't just buy you forever land and a time stop for the pattern to have performed. And in actual fact, even though our methodology is the only one that has interim targets, we actually have interim time frames to show whether you are performing at the rate we expect it to be at. So are you ahead of schedule or behind schedule? It's a bit like doing the rally and you go through stages and have you gained time or have you lost time? Um, so this is incredibly useful as an overall tool. And that's, uh, I truly want to make a couple of general trading points here. If you haven't thought about that, but, and this includes investment, it's obviously less critical. Everything becomes more critical and sensitive when leverage is involved and the costs, etc., etc., etc. And most people should earn the right to leverage and you haven't yet done so. You have to consistently show that you're a very avid loss uh, taker, quick to take a loss when the view changes before you become uh, aggressively orientated towards leverage. But assuming now that you truly value money management and understand the principles of knowing how to manage your losses, time stops are an, a logical extension of risk reward ratio. Risk reward ratios, we are the only ones which have RRR stroke T. Uh, how much risk, how much reward? Uh, what is their ratio and what is the time frame expected for it and then afterwards how much did it behave in? In fact, most of our best structures behave in fractions of the allowed time frame. Sometimes tenths, 40%, 30%, 15% uh, and we've even had exceptions that they're over uh, before they start. Um, you know, so that's great because then you're just increasing, you're getting your capital back but you're getting your capital back earlier and you're paying less carry cost for the loud potential hold. This is the financial mathematics so many of you are not talking about. How did I even get into this? I think it's useful. I'm just throwing it out there. 
There you go. Have it. Enjoy it. Make of it what you will. Learn and grow. We have a method where that is technically derived uh, by our particular um, methodology and by the price, price behavior itself. So we had an interesting guest on and one of his watches was Joy, uh, small and mid cap uh, energies. Uh, he also had, uh, well, that's Verizon, that's not um, energy, anything, we're excusing me, excusing me, where are those others, yeah, I think that was it, uh, also mid was the other one, forgive me, uh, my list is a bit confusing, Middleby Corporation, that's the right, we were speaking about that one as well, So we were asking the question, what's going to be happening on Middleby, which is also in the small cap energy space, uh, what's happening here, because you've got kind of tight and churny, and we were asking the question, could it be a downside break uh, when we were doing our pretty bearish view of uh, energies and energy small caps, macro we bullish, but for the time period following this massive sell off. Um, it's, it was a bit of a bone jar, uh, you, you know, 2020, had so many turning points at so many levels uh, and we were asking and it still hasn't fully uh, told us. Uh, in other words, if you broke that and you started to run that, that still could be a downside. So will we have a demand destroying event still? It hasn't gone away that possibility, but right now um, generally we're seeing energies recovering a little bit. Here was another one that we had as a downside break that went part of the way, part of the way, look at that, part of the way and it had done really well. This was of course the Bloomberg Commodity Index Total Return. Commodity indexes uh, are very heavy uh, energies generally are from these banker types and Bloomberg etc etc and you can see this one actually was running very well for target up until around then and then it started to broaden out and we would have said at that point when you broke you see the dash line there I didn't draw it perfectly that it was starting to show signs that it's not going to make that full target by the way it did make second interim there you go you can see it there it was all looking hunky-dory at one point um, so it wasn't it wasn't like that there wasn't weakness in the energies during the November December, January into the first quarter uh, of the year going part of the way into the second and you even had a, a low here in May uh, which is not that long ago now given that we've just put August to bed. Anyway, so a uh, couple of equities, a couple of um, ones that we were watching. Uh, what was that? I think that was an energy as play as well that we were looking at as well so a couple of others that was a little bit of a broadening structure that was worrying us it started to trade off um, still it's still as I say I wouldn't say you can be guaranteed that some of these smaller caps are entirely out of the woods and there is possibility you know you could go up to here you can go up to here on that broadening structure and you could smash this bagel later on if something nasty were to come. By the way, as I've mentioned, I've already said September 23, but I've already mentioned September, October can be uh, a little bit of an interesting period. But everyone's back at the desks in the cities of London, New York, back, well, probably some of them, most of them working at home now, but they'll still have their Bloomberg screens on and various other things. So markets can take direction. It's still a seminal period, uh, people, uh, and something could come down the pike for us. So they've got your intention. What else have we got for you? Did we do... Uh, that's a bank ETF. I felt I had a few more um, uraniums. Oh, this is one um, that is good. Uh, and this is the energy select sector. And I, I like this. This is, this is why I say generally this is looking uppish. I would have preferred if that had gone a little bit higher than that. And then we'd had that as a structure, but that is uh, pretty bullish looking overall and points to an upside continuation. But you could get one more down dip before you go up again. It's possible, but you should survive if you're able to live with stops down there. It's a bit late to be chasing in there. That's quite a big d distance. But uh, yeah, that's quite interesting XLE. Uh, on your energy side, what else have we got for you? By the way, we do deep dives on this and more and we will not give you all of our favorites. Why would we do that? You've got to become a member and a community to support us and let us help you 
build wealth in reset times that's the game this is the bad old world that we're in um, so still a little bit energy fuels a little bit uh, more to do before some of them fully shake off uh, the bearish structures that are looming I'm going to go back to the log scale again um, so we did we did threaten and warn of a possible head and shoulders here hasn't broken but that could come down really hard and then do a weak rally and then you could end up with something that does uh, break it will take some macro event but I'm not sure that we can say that risk is completely gone um, and then Vulcan we had traded and short and did make targets so again this guy I've got him um, on log scale at the moment but on the regular side you can see that target has been made so we did get a couple of our, uh, energy shorts home uh, after all of that that was again Vulcan you can see him there ba -ba -ba -da. That was the break over there then you've cleared an important level there you get your return move after you ran the 525 round number down 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 rally you did have to sit through a rally down 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 target make for the hvf structure not yet on the head and shoulders but there's plenty of time for that so that was your left your huge right so some some particular companies are taking strain uh, without debt who knows might be stuffed with debt from the March 2020 period you need to do your own balance sheet research if you want to do funny mentals on them uh, but this particular risk reward ratio is good and strong and did perform to HVF will it perform to the head and shoulder all the way down to 1.6 don't forget when you shorted that on the break of the bagel it was at 6.6 6.6 and then we, we took this risk reward only on the just-in-time entry at 602 and that is still a 1.6 call and you've already traded sub 3.46 so good performer there Australian market there was some other uh, let's just have a peek there were some others uh, that are looking bullish and these two are very similar this is a Invesco small cap energy don't forget our, our friend uh, Chris McIntosh um, he runs a uh, small cap, well, he runs a great fund uh, and he does a, a bit of small cap uh, energy longs and the market is certainly coming his way. So I would imagine you'll find uh, he's doing just fine uh, with his performance. Well done to him and shout out. Uh, again, squeezing higher on uh, Fennec Oil Services. This could be a type three um again risk uh rising wedge structure as well you could get something like this and go through the roof here uh, so again that's looking pretty positive a little bit not the right structure for me to jump in planes all american we shorted this to three dollars that's right you heard me right uh during the single oil uh digit oil trade there is still the charts and draws from that beautiful day that was the take 3.34 since then you've been in a long winding rising wedge that is now up at 15.45 we suggested that it would make for if you're a patient a recovery long as energies uh, recovered actually oil recovered far better than what planes uh, all american has done but it has gained some ground now don't forget it's not bad to get if you'd got long at three let's say you'd got long later somewhere along here at six or seven um, it's still a doubler uh, to 15.45 where it stands and it's got a room to grow when we shorted that that was in 2019 we took puts we did lots of things in the community you could have got that at $26 up top here we were doing the 24 25 26 dollars that's about right not quite 26 I talk rubbish 24s and a half uh, and that's where we were engaging at our RH3 so that's what made it a very attractive trade for us again a bit of a gap there hey let's check that theory no idea how it'll turn out I mean I did tell you about it didn't I uh, how did it go that would be capitulation point one pull it down pull it down get that 50 percent somewhere in the middle on the gap i think i would put the middle there again a little bit of an overshoot it was giving you 210 what did you get 307 so even at 19 dollars, you put that 50 percent 
in the middle of the gap, the fastest part of the move, and you're getting a pretty accurate guidance, guidance, it's not geometric so much as our strategy, which comes from the actual price behavior. This comes as a percentage base of the price behavior, and that's why you might have got uh, a little bit of an overshoot there. But nonetheless, still interesting. You see, you're getting that. So you would have been at $10, and this would have said, you're in the regions of twos, and you ended up trading, what was the low, the low, the low, the low, $3. So it would have said, it's a heck of a difference. When you're at 10, to have something say, yeah, you're heading in the direction of twos. Yeah, you, you shouldn't have lost money after the trade did uh, the threes. Let's put it that way. Um, so far from perfect, but definitely indicative, indicative, indicative. Teller oil has been a recovery, but boy, did it get slammed. Boy, did it get slammed. Um, what else have we got? This, of course, is the big boy of um, the oils, Rockefeller Inc. The psychopaths and criminals that run oil and pharma and a bit of light genocide on the side. Why not? It's a great business. You know, taking scalps, slaughtering folk, funding wars, selling more of your oil. Seem like nice guys to you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice people. Uh, mm. Yeah, maybe not. Anyway, uh, so again, got to argue. Are we seeing a bit of a breakout uh, here from this structure? We got a good move through the 112s. Could it be something? You know, this is as liquid as anything you guys can get. Put strikes everything under the sun on this there uh, fella. Um, I would say uh, up, I'm afraid to say, for given the owners. Although officially they've sold out of all of it because green, you know, if you believe that, you'll believe anything. Um, what else have we got in the energy world? Kazatomprom, say that quickly after a few chiquilas. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, this is a, a nice little look at a bottoming. Nice little look at a bottoming. What did we do at 25? Let's show you what we drew. Come on, go back up. What's monthly? No. What's weekly? There you go. So we were saying, hang on, hang on. This looks like a bit of a level of some significance. The 25, not the 2505. Oh, That's a rounding error. Get him back. 25. Take him off. There you go. Um, so this does look like you're based. You've based out a little bit. Something like that. And you are now turning. You've got localized highs over here and you're coming up to those levels. So it could be, it could be, it could be, it might not be the best of time to just race in, um, but any uh, retrace could be potentially an interesting opportunity. So retrace, a little bit of basing, a little bit of a cuppy handle, have a little fondle and get yourself in there with a bit of uh, love. Uh, into the energies markets, take some filthy lucre out of that their market. Why not? You've got to do it. You've got to do it for yourself. You've got to build wealth. No one else is going to do it for you. I can tell you that much. Okay. So yeah, a little bit of a rounding uh, bottom. A little bit of a rounding bottom. Oh, it gets me so excited. Gas, oil. Um, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Wouldn't chase in here, but also a little bit of uh, a little bit of pointing to recovery, but a tiny bit toppy short term there. I think you might, you might, you might have turned uh, at this juncture, certainly, but you may end up, uh, you know, making a bit of a channel of recovery out of it. So you don't want to get in at a localized high. I need to watch it do that and then go higher. You'll get shaken out uh, and then you'll watch it go higher in the long run. That's a bit soul destroying. Don't do it. Don't do it. You've got to have method. You've got to have method for your entries. That's what we are all about. Energies are looking like it's stirring. Energies are looking like it's stirring. Go and have a look at your energy picks and faves. Uh, decide how they're standing. If you have an approach, if you understand money management, um, investment, potentially uranium now coming good, a couple of things you could tie up there that could hold you in good stead. I will still say there is a small risk of that demand destroying event that could come uh, out of the blue and can be a bit of a slap in the face. Uh, a little bit concerned for the September, October banks, interest rates, lots of things that might need a little organic event 
to allow for some more proliferation and support and liquidity provision to the primary criminal structures. Who knows? Who knows? We'll talk more about this next time. But for now, energy is looking good. I'll talk to you all later. Don't forget, like and share. Thank you for the support that you gave us on our silver structure. Uh, we'll be back with updates there too in the not too distant future. Until next time, catch you later. Bye for now.